already just moved that in. We are very proud of that. Thank you. excitement. That's why you're taking those risks. Even if it's at the expense of somebody else's feelings. It's all fun in the beginning. Throwing your morals out the window. Seeking a thrill. But all thrills come to an end. Always think about how it's going to end. What's going to happen when you get caught. Because those risks might not be worth it. Consequences are inevitable. You can never escape what's coming to you. Never. The mistakes you make in the past can always come back to haunt you. Be mindful of what you do. And there ain't no rewind button on life. I saw her leaving the liquor store and she still thick as hell. I tried to get her attention, but she kept it pushing. Uh, last time you talked to her? Bro, I'm 42 years old, bro. I ain't seen that bitch since I was like 19, 20, bro. Why you stop messing with her? She said she was pregnant. Asked for a DNA test. She ain't want to do it. Said, fuck it, hell. I ain't talked to her since. Yeah. Yeah, I thought she had a little girl or something. But anyway, bro, I'm trying to get myself together, man, so I can holler at my hoe before my wife get here, bro. You got you a new little thing, thing. Oh, yeah, she thick, too, bro. Thick yellow thing. 21, 22, little bit. Shit, she fine, too, bro. Thick. Anyway, bro, I'm gonna holler at you later, bro. What's up? You ate something yet? No, not yet. What you got a taste for? 
I want some potatoes with some crab legs and some shrimp. Oh, you hungry, hungry. Give me a little second. I'll send you some money to get you some. Okay. All right. Send you a little couple dollars. Squeeze on something. Man, I hope she don't catch feelings and try to get me caught up by that other young bitch. I can't do another one of them. When he got locked up, I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I'm just glad I met Frank because he really handled shit. Wait, I thought you were single. I am. Frank is just a friend that helps me out from time to time. I mean, I ain't trying to get in your business or nothing, but uh, what you got to do for this Frank? I mean, if you don't mind me asking. I mean, just friend stuff, like companionship, talking to him, twerk for him a little bit. Oh, so you basically do little favors for money. I get it. Angel, it's all good. Nigga, I'm not a prostitute. Is that what you think I am? No, I ain't judging. I was just putting everything together. My bad, my bad. I was jumping to conclusions. I ain't mean it like that. Well, I'm not no hoe, and Frank is like 86 years old, and his meat don't even work. Uh, you want to put on some music? Yeah. Cut the wheel, let it swing, point the bass and let it bang. But never let another nigga run you out of your hey, 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 hey. Ew, this is old people music. You mind if I put something on? Ooh, this my shit. Don't be trying to hide. Man, my wife ended up seeing that shit. It took her months to get over it. Man, I hope this bitch ain't on that type of time. I don't need no more drama at the crib. For real. Look, I'm tired of these young niggas. Look, I'll just call you back later. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I want to eat that ass. I mean, eat with, uh, I mean, I, eat with your ass. Hell, I paid for the shit. Shit, a whole wife would still be gone. I can't wait to squeeze on that. I just hope she ain't got no crazy nigga like my other little thing thing. I ain't got no time to be fighting over no kitty. Shit, no. Yeah, let's go down okay, the 
talk. What do you want? Don't be asking me all them questions. I got a new man now, and he'll kick your ass. You ain't gonna do shit. My new man will smoke your whole ass. You ain't gonna do shit. You think I'm playing? He right here. You wanna talk to him? He'll kick your ass. You think I'm playing? Man, she had me all the way fucked up. The hell I look like fighting over some kitty that ain't mine. A bit crazy hell. Can I speak to Frank? He dead. Dead? He, well, what happened? He was old as fuck. He died to sleep. Gonna be my first time linking with this bit. Gonna make sure my meat work. What the hell is she calling me for? I can't talk right now. I'm running late. What you mean? How you in my business from a whole nother state? No, nah, no. Nah. You are my business because you are my daughter. Well, I'm back in town, so I'm heading to the house now. Well, you better tell your little friend to come pick you up because there ain't gonna be no fucking in my house. The mistakes you make in the past can always come back to hunt you. Look, true story, I had a friend that didn't find out he had a child until the child was 18 years old. All because the baby mama tried to make somebody else believe they was the father. She had her own reasons for doing things, but that could have been real bad. Why y'all old niggas out here trying to fuck somebody's daughter? You better not mess around and almost fuck your own daughter. Miss Nick, there was. That's including you and your child. But what if the existence of your child was built on a lie? How would you feel to be robbing someone of their true identity? Born to make mistakes. 
mistakes. Just make sure you own up to your mistakes. We all fight battles within, right? But a lot of us can hide it and maintain a normal life. But let's talk about the ones that can't. What about them? Fell them on the next game and I hate so that I let them. There we go, just like that for you. going for brunch today? Yeah, I have a doctor's appointment in about an hour. It should be done by noon. Just come meet me at the house. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. What you doing? Just getting ready to meet Chris. Man, man, I thought me and you had an understanding, man. What you mean? You still kicking it with her? I don't want her to suspect anything. I don't want to make it obvious. Man, whatever, man. Just pull up on me when y'all get done doing what y'all doing. Okay. Where are you at now? Still at this stinking ass hotel. All right. I'll call you in a little while. Yeah. Ready yet? 
Just give me another minute. Just where would you got on? Really? I'm not about to go in nobody's restaurant looking like this. Why? You dress soulful anyways. Soulful? What, what do you mean by that? You're just the type of person to throw some shit on and wear it out. So, I can't dress? Is that what you're saying? Relax, it's just a joke, it ain't that deep. So that's why you don't invite me around your friends, huh? What are you talking about? I know what the fuck they be saying. Don't bring Chris around me. Chris is crazy. I know what the fuck they be saying. You need to calm down. You're fake as hell. You can get the fuck out. Chris. You think this is a fucking game. You Chris. think this is a game. with a knife saying I was talking shit about her behind her back. Oh shit, she didn't take the meds. Medicine? Yeah, about a few months ago she was diagnosed with that bipolar shit. She been on meds ever since. Man, that shit got bad. I wonder why she didn't tell me. Man, I can't give you her reason, but that was part of the reason me and her broke up. I couldn't take that shit. Do you think she knows about you and me? No, nah, she would have said something. You know she not that type to hold shit in. I am a real shitty friend. Hey, yeah. Wait, hold on. This is her calling now. Man, fuck all that, man. Fuck all that, man. Let's go get some food. Crank the car, man. Let's go, man. Fuck all that shit, man. Let's go. Going through tough times. It's the best way to know who really loves you. Because love ain't something you can just turn on and off. It's either you love someone or you don't. You either loyal or you're not. Even though Chris is struggling mentally, that saved her from a fake friendship and a fake relationship. Don't get it twisted. Chris was wrong for what she did, but she was right for doing it. Do you feel what I'm saying? If you know someone struggling mentally, be there for them. Let them know you care. It's already hard enough to go through it, but it's even harder to go through it alone. Let your friends know it's okay. It's okay to take meds. It's okay to have that problem. Let them know it's gonna be alright. You the one who came over here on that clown. Oh, so I'm a joke to you? I bet you be talking shit, huh? Man, ain't nobody even thinking about you, man. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah, get out of my house. No. Man. Get out no. of my crib, man. You think this is a fucking game? No, no. What you gonna do with that?
everyone. So in today's episode, Chris kind of loses her shit. We want to talk about how mental illness plays into these actions. This is not normal behavior. A lot of times we see on reality TV just snapping out and it's okay, but those anger outbursts can have consequences. Cops can be called, people can be hurt. So, you know, we want to talk about mental health on this episode and how we can identify some symptoms of mental illness and what to do in a mental health crisis. So what Chris's friend doesn't know is that she was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder um, from her primary care doctor. Chris told her doctor that she was having signs and symptoms of extreme mood changes, feeling paranoid, um, you know, having self-image and body image issues, you know, dealing with social media, the anxiety of keeping up a certain image and what other people think of her. And she was prescribed medication. As you can see in this episode, she didn't really seem to be big on taking her medication, not dealing with the bipolar symptoms, whether that would be with medication or counseling, um, not dealing with it kind of helped to get to, you know, the situation that we're in in today's episode. So we just want to highlight, you know, some of the signs and symptoms of mental illness to watch out for and talk about what you can do if you or someone you love is experiencing signs and symptoms of mental illness before it escalates to a mental health crisis, which is what we have going on in today's episode with Chris snapping clean out. So um, some of the signs and symptoms that you can look for are going to be feeling sad, withdrawn, isolating, uh, excessive fear or worry, uh, you know, thinking about the same thing over and over again, extreme mood changes, highs and lows, feeling um, a reduced ability to be able to focus or concentrate on tasks that you need to do, Um, detachment or inability to cope. So, you know, sometimes an elephant in the room kind of thing and the person just does not seem to be dealing with it at all. Um, Major changes in energy, eating or sex drive, excessive alcohol or drug use, hopelessness and suicidal thinking are all signs and symptoms of mental illness that, you know, really need to be paid attention to. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list there's many other you know signs and symptoms and when you know people sometimes you can and pick up you know on their individual um, you know traits and just what's not normal for them so the other thing that we want to think about when we're looking at these signs and symptoms and what kind of approach that we need to take to managing mental health is the frequency and duration of these symptoms so how often are they happening and how long are they lasting right are they interfering with work with school with relationships or you know is it kind of going on in the background and we can still manage it ourselves Um, but you know, once you get to the point where it really is becoming a problem with your daily life and your daily routine, um, it might be a good idea to seek, uh, professional help at that point. Some things that you can do if you or your loved one is experiencing signs and symptoms of mental illness, um, you know, before you get to the point of professional help would be, you know, getting the plan together. So tell your loved ones, the people closest to you, the people that you trust, this is what's going on. This is what I'm feeling. And, you know, like these are the actions that I'm going to take to try to get better. So identify the source of negative feelings. If that is a a person, place, or thing, if it's a worry for the future, if it's a trauma from the past, uh, just trying to be real with yourself and, you know, acknowledge what it is. Sometimes it's a combination of things and sometimes you don't know what it is and that's real too. Finding ways to change the environment or address the issue when possible. So if it is a person, place, or thing, what can you do in your environment to change that, to get rid of them, you know, to adjust, you know, the space to make it easier? If you're talking about addressing the issue, sometimes that can be like a discussion or an action. Uh, Sometimes it's going to be more of a passive thing. So, you know, acknowledging something from the past or maybe something from the the present or the future that you can't control and, you know, maybe writing down the concerns, journaling them or, you know, just speaking them, but then also finding a way to, to heal, to let go, to, you know, be at peace, have patience, um, And again, sometimes we we don't know what it is and 
we just have to go through that journey of self exploration to find what it is and find what will help. Another thing that we can do is changing our perspective. So if we know we're having patterns of negative thinking, if we're having thoughts that come into our mind that, you know, they're negative, they're, they're not focused on the positive for the future, for hope, we need to acknowledge these thoughts and, you know, start by changing them. So what can we do to flip them around, to make them positive, to find, you know, what we're going to do instead of beating ourselves up in our head. So there's actually evidence-based research about this approach. And, you know, of course it is easier said than done to just tell yourself to be positive, right? But there's two approaches in particular, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, which is, you know, a therapy that is addressing our thoughts and how our thoughts impact our behaviors, our actions. So when we start by dealing with our thoughts and what's in our head, what we're telling ourselves, we're then able to influence and change our behaviors. Uh, the second one is going to be called dialectical behavioral therapy. So again, literally, what are we telling ourselves? And how does that affect our behaviors, the things that we're doing on a daily basis? It may sound silly to just tell yourself to think positive, but there is actually science behind that. And it's not a light switch. It's not something that you can just, you know, tell yourself one day and all the negative thoughts go away. It's a process. It's, you know, a journey. It's daily work. And, you know, the negative thoughts, of course, they will creep back in. But just knowing that you have the power, the ability to talk to yourself, to change those thoughts, to change those actions, um, you know, it really helps to give hopefulness for the future also focusing on self-care and physical health if we're trying to have mental health it's really important that you know we are taking care of our ourselves our spirit our body so self-care you know things like getting enough rest you know taking baths emerging ourselves in water getting sun um, going, you know, outside in a way to where, you know, we're touching the earth, we're feeling grounded, you know, feet in the, the ground and the grass and the sand, but just having those experiences with ourselves and with nature so that we feel cared for and rested. Um, also with our physical health, just thinking about, you know, the nutrients that we're putting into our body. So whole foods, healthy fruits and vegetables that are going to give us, you know, vitamins and minerals and the things that we need to thrive for our brain to, you know, give us the right chemistry when we think about you know physical activity i don't even want to call it exercise because i don't want to scare people into thinking you have to exercise but you know just walking stretching um those kind of things are going to release endorphins and dopamine for you so it is literally you know science-based approaches to managing mental health through you know some self-care things some some nature some meditation your diet physical activity it you know, it sounds like it doesn't matter, like it, it, it might not impact your mental health, but really it's, you know, it's like all the little things that add up. So the last thing we want to touch on is what to do if you are in a moment where you or someone else is experiencing a mental health crisis. So in a moment where someone is a danger to themselves or others, that is the definition of a crisis. And in that moment, it often is appropriate to call 911 or to reach out to the county or um, city, locality, mental health uh, crisis team. There's some other things you can do if you're um, that person or you're an individual standing by, you know, just trying to remain calm. Do not argue with delusions. If someone is believing something that's completely out of touch with reality, that's okay in this moment. Um, in a crisis situation, the priority is just to keep them safe, keep everybody safe. It's okay if they're believing things right now that aren't true. Just go with it. Validate their feelings no matter what they are. So, you know, if they're upset with other people, but there's at least one person that, you know, they're willing to have a conversation with, you know, be that person. Let them have those negative feelings about other people. Just try to be supportive. You know, I'm here for you. I want to help you. What can I do for you? Um, leading to the next point, just kind of reassuring safety. Uh, if you can, providing emotional or physical support. So, you know, asking them again, what can I do? What are you upset about? Um, if you can provide any physical support, food, water, blanket, um, you know, safe place, ride to the ER. Um, there's usually two ways to 
check in or be checked in in a crisis situation. So that's going to be basically voluntarily committing yourself and saying, you know, I know that I'm a, not in a right state of mind. I'm a danger to self or others. I'm going to sign myself in. Um, or having a doctor make the claim that you are a danger to self or others. And then in that case, you know, the medical team makes that decision and you are committed. Um, in which case, you know, there's some hoops to jump through and things before you, you get out. So just being aware of how serious it can be if you do experience it, a mental health crisis um, can sometimes save us.